Today on the show, we're going to be focusing heavily on media strategy. Why it's important, how you can break it down, and things to consider with regard to creative, as well as connecting user experience and customer journeys. If you get this right with an audience-centric media strategy, you will grow your business through finding new customers and growing relationships with the ones you already have. Hello, good morning. My name's James Rostance, and this is the 414 Live, live here this Thursday morning on exclusive to LinkedIn Live. So the 414 is indeed for you if you're a professional B2B marketer, whether you work in-house at an agency or doing stuff in a, in a company, or indeed if you are a company executive with a hands-on role in your company's sales and marketing activities. And each and every week, we get to, I get to speak with some of the greatest and most interesting minds in B2B marketing so that you can expand and enhance your knowledge each and every week to do better in your job and to deliver even better results for your company. So following hot on the heels of uh, last week's show, this week uh, is all about helping you grow your B2B business, or indeed, if you're agency side, helping your clients grow their B2B uh, uh, business. And today I've got an awesome guest joining me live from Alexandra Palace in London. Please welcome Mr. Rob Gold. Rob, good morning. Hey, James. Um, my, ho my home is not actually in Alexandra Palace, uh, much as I would love it to be. Uh, but I live very <laughs> close by, and uh, nice to see you. <laughs> Pleasure. Actually, yes, now you mention it, it did sound like you live in Alexandra Palace, which... Uh, <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> not, not yet, I like that. <laughs> so uh, today, uh, yeah, we're going to talk, be talking about creative media strategy uh, for uh, growing your, your B2B business. Uh, so could you start then, please, by explaining to me your take and how you describe media strategy. Yeah, of course, James. So, um, look, the, the most important place to start is with um, your audiences and what's going on in the world because connecting with people is hard. It's harder than it's ever mm -hmm. been. I mean, who would have thought that you could buy stuff on a watch or get stuff delivered in an hour's time? Um, and therefore, the role of brands is more vital than it's ever been. Um, and people often talk about the unre unreasonable expectation of audiences and consumers. But I, I, I don't really agree with that. I think that it's not too much to ask to be remembered by a business, to, uh, for a business to understand what I like as a customer uh, and fundamentally be easy to buy or easy to use. And really what that means is you've got to be relevant, you've got to be personalised, and really you've got to be focused on your audiences. Um, and a really great example, I think, if I move slightly into a different world, is that of yeah. uh, Toys R Us, which is a massive, or was a massive toy retailer, uh, and the Apple Store. Uh, Toys R Us are no longer in business because of, for lots of different reasons, but uh, if you think about the experience of that as a customer, you would take your children up there and walk in and your toys were piled 25 foot high and you couldn't touch them. Now imagine if Toys R Us had been more audience focused and created an Apple Store experience in Toys R Us. I would have taken my kids down there every Saturday, I would have let them run around and play, and I probably would have bought more products. Um, and look, B2B is no different. You know, you've mm. got to show real value in what you're giving to your audiences. You've got to create frictionless experiences. And there's no excuse nowadays because there's data signals everywhere that allows you to understand those audiences. So James, it brings me to answer your question specifically. You know, what's the role of great media strategy? And, and it's vital. You know, you've, fundamentally, we connect brands to audiences in environments where we know they are. We think about what they're doing. We understand their behavior. Um, and if you get that right, it is proven time and time again uh, that you can grow your business through finding new customers and growing the relationships with people you've already got. Absolutely. Okay, so in that case, uh, what is the process that you go through <clears throat> in developing such a strategy specifically for B2B businesses? <clears throat> uh, well, fundamentally, it breaks down into four or five steps, in my opinion. I think as a, as a marketeer, simplicity is really important in a really complicated world. Um, the first thing that you've got to do is really understand the challenge that you're facing. You know, often people don't ever get to the real heart of the issue. You know, as marketers, you're asked to drive market share or you're asked to increase consideration or you're asked to you know, generate demand. But actually, if you get under the skin of some of those things, 
it becomes much richer. You know, for example, if somebody's asking you to grow your market share, is it because the category needs reinvention and you're part of the problem? Um, if someone's asking you to grow consideration, is it because your brand is irrelevant for that particular uh, product, service or audience? Um, and if it's around driving demand, is it because there's a new innovative person coming into your category who is significantly stealing um, the things that you're trying to do? So the first thing we always do is try and get to the heart of really what your challenge is and not just the generic marketing goals, but the business problem underneath it. The second component part of that then is what's the insight? So once you've understood your challenge, like the insight is the key difference. What's the audience? What are they doing? Who are they? What's the motivation? At what stage of their purchase journey are they on? What's going on in the category? Um, in B2B, it's incredibly important because the journey is long, as everybody talks about. And at every single part of that journey, there's a different motivation and need state. And in B2B, you've got so many more people. You're not selling toothbrushes or cars or cat food. You're selling you know, often big, complicated products and services that require a really deep understanding of your audiences. And the fuel that everybody sits on now that probably isn't used enough to get the best insight is your first party data. You know, I mentioned before, there's no excuse now. So you've got significant amounts of information in CRM systems, um, all of your website analytics, your customer data, your offline sales team. So the second part, James, of our approach and our planning process is, is to get to the insight. Once you've defined a challenge mm -hmm. and you've got to the crux of an insight, that's really where we come and say, well, what's the role of media? How can media help solve those challenges? And we use the word media strategy. And media strategy is often something that people worry about. Like, you shouldn't be overwhelmed. It's simply a case of saying, how can you use media channels in an activation sense to solve the challenges based on the insights that you've come up with? And we use simple mechanics, or I'd recommend that you use simple mechanics. So, you know, who are you trying to get to do what so that they buy what? You know, kind of the get to buy analogy is a really nice way of articulating a strategy. And I often think it's nice to create some kind of galvanizing wrapper around that strategy. Um, you know, if you work with a complicated uh, product with a long purchase cycle, your audiences will have um, lots of moments of indecision along their journey. That could be one of your insights. And a way that you could reframe that challenge to galvanize what you're going to do in activation would be to turn the moments of indecision into individual moments of impact. And if you just reframe that, and then everything that you do from an activation part, the channels you use, the ideas you have, they come through the lens of that strategy, that they will ultimately answer your challenge and goal. So that's the fourth part around activation. And then the fifth part is measurement. You know? And in B2B, it's very difficult. Um, you often have disparate measurement systems. You have different people with different knowledge pools. So I'd recommend that you create uh, almost a dashboard of leading indicators where you've got business metrics, you've got uh, media metrics, you have on-site um, KPIs, and then you have some sort of verbatim from some, maybe some of your sales teams. And if you create those things together, often you get a picture of success um, when you can't always orchestrate line of sight from initial insight to, um, to outcome. So James, that's how we, uh, sorry, how I would recommend that you really think about the process of breaking down media strategy and planning into a pretty simple and consistent framework. Perfect. That was an awesome um, start to the show there with uh, quite an excellent um, uh, overview of, of the process. Um, coming in quite early uh, here, Vanessa McCulloch has, has got a question to ask. Vanessa, uh, thanks for, for, for that. We'll come to that, I think, uh, maybe after the next question. If I could just put this to Rob first, uh, which is... Uh, what are the important considerations then in developing the, uh, the, 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 the process for the media strategy? There we go. Okay, yeah, come. And by the way, I've never had such great feedback so early on into a presentation. So uh, I'll take that. <laughs> <Good> thing, thanks, <laughs> thanks James. Um, but the considerations, I think, I, uh, to repeat myself, you've got to put your audiences at the heart. In yep. marketing nowadays, we've shifted. Um, you know, all the people listening to this and watching will know that... Um, we've sort of moved from this world where you'd say we were a brand-led marketing world and we've moved to what we'd call a consumer world. And what I mean by that is often, especially in B2B, we would make products and services, we would define an audience and we would spend money pushing messages to those people and the outcome we're expecting is a behavior change at the customer end. And now we're in this world of opt-in culture where people can self-select, you can uh, be reached across a multitude of different platforms. We're in a world where now brands need to change their behavior. They need to change their products and services and then just think about their audiences before they start selling stuff. 
you know, simply put, I'd say, don't build, then sell. Uh, you've got to think of it the other way around. So that's one consideration. The second consideration is something I mentioned briefly is the criticality of first party data. Um, the businesses that can get on top of the understanding of that information will succeed quicker than anybody else. None less so because third party data is becoming um, more difficult to use than ever before. And frankly, it's not mm. as powerful and rich. Uh, and that is your secret weapon as a brand. Well, I guess the final consideration is you've got to think about the new buyers um, in every single journey now. In every single category in, in business marketing, um, three quarters of all buyers are under 35, the millennial generation, um, which means you've got to rethink the whole journey. You know, people have use different touch points. They want content in different ways. They don't want to interact over the telephone. Um, so those are some of the considerations that you need to think about when you're orchestrating a, um, a comm strategy and using paid media. Perfect. So... Uh... Tell you what, it would be good, nice actually to uh, cover Vanessa's question right now. So uh, Vanessa asks, sticking to a niche or opening to a wider consumer base, what would you advise for a cleaning business? Oh, that's interesting. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you've got, to, first of all, I, I do the same thing. I mean, I, I, you don't want to advertise a cleaning business to people who aren't interested in cleaning. So um, mm -hmm. you've got to understand, which is a fairly glib thing to say, but it, it makes my point around audiences. Who is your product for? What benefit does it have versus other people? And why should somebody come to you to buy it? I think if you can simply break down those component parts and answer them, you'll um, answer your own question. You know, you'll find people who are in market for you. Um, I'll t I mean, I'll talk a little bit about investment levels and, you know, making sure that you um, invest behind your right, your strategies and holding your nerve. But I think if you've got conviction behind what you're doing, um, You've got to make sure that people hear your message. So there's no point coming up with a fantastic strategy defining your audiences. If nobody knows who you are, particularly in the world where people are moving towards trusted and owned brands more than ever before, people aren't going to inquire with you. So define your audience, be really clear about your USP and what value are you offering to your customers or your potential customers. Um, and I'd focus on those. And I think you'll come out with the answer that you know, is the right one for you. Solid. There you go. Uh, Vanessa, does that answer the question? Um, we're, well, I think we work on a 30 second delay, not because we're worried about anyone swearing. That's just the way that the, the internet works with, with the show. So, um, <laughs> um, Vanessa, if that uh, works for you, give us a, th a thumbs up. If not, then um, I'm sure Rob will give uh, um, some further detail on that. Right. In the meantime, then. Uh, so let's talk about the role of creative thinking uh, in developing a uh, create a a media strategy. Could you talk us through uh, what that means to you and how it's uh, applied? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, simply put, any, anybody can buy media on managed service platforms now. Um, yeah. You know, I work and represent a media company, um, and we, if I indulge in two seconds about us, we, we heavily focus on our IP that sits between that planning process that I just mentioned. And I would encourage you all to do the same mm -hmm. because if you don't have a uh, creative way of thinking and that can form many different parts, the, the way you innovate in your channels, the messaging that you create, um, the way that you interact with your partners and customers, you arguably are the same as anybody else selling your products and service. So creativity is the thing that is dif the differentiating point between company A and company B. And it, it takes many different forms. Simply put, make sure you make stuff that's fit for the environments you're using them. You know, you'll all be frustrated when you go onto a mobile phone and get a terrible experience, or if you can't inquire or you can't use Instagram in the way that Instagram is designed. So in its simplest form, make sure you understand the platforms that you're using. But the role of it is important because strategically, it's proven time and time again that if you can connect emotionally and you can drive fame around your brand, um, it drives business outcomes. Uh, and I mentioned before about the importance of thinking about new, younger audiences. You need to start doing mm -hmm. things that you may not have done before. You need to use video platforms, you need to use audio platforms versus asking someone to download a 25 page PDF. You know, you've got to ask yourself, would you engage with that kind of content? So creativity isn't just about the message, um, it's about your mentality as much as anything else. Okay, so what would be a good example? In fact, let's do a contrast even. Um, yeah, a bad example is the 25-page PDF, which you may not have sold properly to the audience, but what would be a good example of uh, a creative to lead with? Um, so take some of the 
you know, while, whilst we're on LinkedIn, let's talk about LinkedIn. Take some of the fantastic uh, brand platform work that we see on LinkedIn. Mm. Um, I recently saw some messaging from Salesforce. Um, Salesforce, if you look at their messaging, there's a few things that are really important. It's consistent. Every time you know it's them, they use the same colorways, they same they use logos, the same, they use the same lockups. They also use emotion and they use real people, which although it feels a bit simple, is really important and isn't commonly utilized in B2B marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and they contextualize their product in the vertical that they're talking about. So if you scroll through LinkedIn and you know, see some messaging from Salesforce, you'll see a manufacturing message with the background of a manufacturing product and service. You'll see a financial prop- product proposition against the context of a financial institution. So um, there's a few areas there. And those guys also use um, video assets. They use audio assets. So they do things that are relevant, that are personalized, and that are using touch points that um, are much more massively consumed nowadays. And they're not expecting people to go too far. As I said, you aren't going to fill in a form and read something that takes you two hours. Um, you just don't do that anymore. And no. uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say a brand, a brand like a Salesforce is a, is a good one. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, by the way, uh, Kevin Boardman's uh, is, is <laughs> Kevin Boardman's jumped in with a, with a technical problem. He's, he's asking, has anyone else lost connection? Uh, not from our end, uh, Kevin. Um, mm, I'm, I'm mindful to help some people with uh, technical. Uh, problems in the middle of the show uh kevin could you just tr- try closing down the browser and restarting i've found that works nicely in in the past so with regard to creating uh back to it so with regard to creating uh creative for campaigns what are some of the um pitfalls that you might come up against and you'd mm. be keen for uh, marketers to avoid Okay, again, I'll, I'll pick up on something you just did. Classic yeah. IT solution there, James, you know, just close it down and start it again. So that solves um, 95% of IT issues I always find. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so mistakes like now, it would be remiss of me to talk in too much detail about the creative process. As I said, I'm, my expertise is in communications planning and media strategy. Um, but relating to media platforms and creative messaging, I think there are two things that um, I, I see which... I would call mistakes. Um, the first is that you don't invest enough. And I'm not asking people to, or recommending you spend more than you have, mm-hmm. but vast, vast theory advocates um, a mentality of driving your, driving your share of voice, which is investing disproportionately more, um, or at least to a certain percentage more than your competitors, if you want to grow. Because simply put, if people don't see your messaging, um, as I said to Alison's question before, why would they inquire and why would they buy? Um, so one is when you have the right message creatively and you have the right platform, hold your nerve and make sure you invest appropriately in that. Um, the second, I guess, is don't do what you've always done. I've already mentioned audiences changing, media consumption changing. You know, it's not unreasonable for people to, unreasonable for people to want uh, personalized experiences. So if you haven't started thinking about this sort of stuff, you've probably moved a bit too late already. Um, and please accelerate your thinking in this space because... Um, Otherwise, a new competitor will come in or a new entrant will start to do things differently. And those challenges that I mentioned up front will become Mm. all the more impactful on your organization. So here's a good one. So what does great look like then when someone has um, has, uh, got this well implemented, in fact, better than well implemented? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I sort of mentioned Salesforce tactically. But I had a, I've, I've had a think about this, and there are a few component parts to what my opinion, and it's only my opinion, is what great is all about. So one is where there's a really crystal clear and simple insight behind the product and service. Why are you doing it? Mm-hmm. The second is where it stands out, you know, because it emotionally resonates with you somehow, because it connects with culture and audiences. You know, that's what we mean by, or what I mean by talking about audiences. And importantly, then it has an end-to-end experience. You know, it's not just an ad that sits there. So um, a fantastic business that is doing this brilliantly, I think, is Cisco, So, or our Cisco. So Cisco are a business that was, you know, I guess simply put, sort of invented the internet. They have been part of digital transformation since day one. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are currently active with, and in market with their collaboration platform, Cisco WebEx, which uh, I guess simply put is a, is a way of interacting with each other and video conferencing. Um, and their marketing campaign that exists right now, I would say is great. It has a really clear understanding of the audience um, and who they're talking to, split down by vertical. You know, there's healthcare focuses and education focuses. And you can imagine in the world we're living in at the moment, those two sectors are 
um, particularly in need of what's happening. And Cisco are actively helping those sectors. They are discounting their products and services and giving them to those people so that they can help them. I think helping is a really important thing to be doing, regardless of situation, because that's what value exchange is all about. Um, they have a really in in innovative um, communication strategy um, using a multitude of very modern progressive touch points that are absolutely in the sweet spot of what our consumers are using um, at the moment. And most importantly, they have a fully integrated journey. So when you come into that brand experience, from if it's from a piece of advertising, when you come to the website, it's a personalized experience. And when you go through that purchase journey at every point of the um, of your interaction with the Cisco WebEx brand, it's personalized and tailored so that when and if you would like to speak to somebody about that, you've got a really clear understanding of the product and it's, you've had a seamless and consistent interaction all the way through. So I'm sure there are many people doing it really well, but that's just one that particularly stands out for me at the moment. Well, I guess uh, following on beautifully from that then, uh, mm. let's talk about customer journeys and what's your take on mm. uh, the process? <laughs> well, customer journeys is... Um, it's a buzzword, isn't it? Everyone talks about it. Mm -hmm. um, I, men I mentioned relevant, personalized, digital experiences at start, being audience focused, understanding customers, all this language. Um, really for marketeers, that means you create, being able to create a consistent experience across all your touch points with the right user experience, the right customer experience to create a holistic journey. Easy to say, isn't it, James? Um, yes. <laughs> but I tell you what, what, you tell me someone who finds it easy to do. Um, and... Uh, I can hopefully shed a bit of light here because you've got to break down under the tip of the iceberg. So if your end goal is connected customer journeys and personalized content, you've got to do some very specific things to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you what those things are. There's four areas, right? So at the bottom of the layer cake um, is all about data management. Like where is your customer data stored? Is it named appropriately and consistently? Is it tagged up? So first of all is basically, you know, organize your bookshelf. The second part that you'd lay on top of that is your insight. So how are you going to understand that information? What's your analytics? You know, how are you segmenting that information into your different audiences and different need states? Once you've tidied your bookshelf and you've you know, sorted them into different colors or, or genres, the next thing is about orchestration. You know, what do you do with it? This is about marketing automation, um, marketing technology that allows you to uh, feed messaging into different platforms. And the last thing is actually how to use it and activating um, that information that you've built up from the bottom through data platforms, uh, through CDPs, um, through media and advertising technology so that you can serve personalized messaging in the marketplace, either through you know, self-serve managed service platforms like social platforms in search or um, when you start to dynamically tailor messaging in video platforms and beyond. So. Um, it's, it's, it's very easy to say, and I, I have to say those are the work, that's the four step, and you, you start from the bottom upwards to make it happen. And then, of course, there's creative, and we've talked about that too. You know, the, the journey is long. You've got multitudes of different audiences. Um, and if you understand your audiences, the point I mentioned at the very start, you can quite simply start to plot what message you serve to what person at the stage of their journey. And if you build that structure that I talked about, you're able mm -hmm. to do it with relative ease. So it's not easy, and if it was easy, everybody were doing it. Um, everyone will be doing it, but I, I certainly got to say you've, got to, you've really got to have a very methodical approach to how you how you connect your journey to your customers. With it, wow. Okay, so um, we, we're getting close to well, at the end of the show. So, what would you like uh, for the audience to get in terms of key takeaways for all of this? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first thing is you've got to stop. Right? Stop and have a think. Stop what you've always been doing because things have changed. Um, and I'm sure James, I've um, listened to loads of your podcast content and watched these, these streams before. Lots of your audiences are already on this journey. <laughs> so that's a really good thing. But if, you, if, you, if you've already started to change, don't stop that evolution because if you haven't, you'll be caught up by somebody who does and overtaken. So number one is stop, have a think, and you know, make sure you are moving um, where your audiences are moving to. Um, the second thing is, and I, that Cisco example is a good one, is make sure you're helping and adding value. Don't just try and sell your products. The clear question from Alison before I mentioned, you know, what's your product, why is it different, and why would someone buy that? Make sure you're crystal clear on that, because again, that will give you a really clear angle to help sell more to new people and, and grow with existing customers. 
Thirdly, is develop a media strategy that starts with those audience insights and end with channels. You know, um, too often, if I talk about media specifically, people will just start going straight to a channel and not thinking about all the stuff in the middle. Um, my point before, when you asked about creativity, that's the thing that will stand you apart and grow your business. Um, and fourthly, is about investing in your approach and holding your nerve. As I said, there's no point having a wonderful orchestrated journey if nobody is actually seeing it. So there does take an element of um, faith and conviction to make sure that you uh, succeed in what you're doing. You know what, what else, uh, is there one extra thing uh, that you see as being integral to success uh, in all of this? What's your, do you have a secret ingredient? Well, I've got a bit of a glib answer to that, um, but <laughs> it's true. Uh, well, it, it's it's people, you know, yeah. the, and the way that you interact with each other. You know, James, think about how you and I, you know, plan for this show. You know, you treat people with courtesy and respect. You understand when the technical stuff doesn't work. You know, you uh, <laughs> you 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 enjoy, you enjoy the time that you spend with each other. You trust and you trust each other, and you um, you value each other's expertise and what they bring. And you know, everybody can talk about technology and platforms and everything else. And don't get me wrong, that's totally true, but. If you haven't got trusted people that you work with that you respect and that you respect the other way around um you know my take on marketing communications is that that's the thing that makes a difference you know just take the pandemic situation we're in at the moment the one thing that every single brand business agency is talking about are their people um and that's because that's what makes the world go around and if you're for example an agency like us our people are our products you know our clients work with us um, and pay us for our people's expertise to help them drive their business forward. So um, it's, a, it's a detailed version of a glib answer, but I do hold that very close to my heart. I really like that. And, and you also, I very much tell it's uh, super authentic as well. And I imagine that also then carries in into the creative work that you're then doing for clients. Uh, is that a fair um, observation? Uh, uh Absolutely. So you only get, you know, creativity I talked about isn't just about the messaging. It's about the way that you think and the touch points that you use. Again, if I take LinkedIn as an example mm. that we're on now, um, as an organization, we work incredibly closely with LinkedIn. They are one of our, if not our key platform and partner. Um, we, uh, they work with us closely. They give us more time. They help drive innovative solutions for our clients. So absolutely, um, you know, it, it, it helps do better work and helps you enjoy the work that you're doing if you do it correctly. So brilliant. So and, and finally then, what would be your advice for marketers who would like to action what we've covered uh, today? Well, one of the principles behind marketing, I think, is frequency. Keep saying the same thing and people will take it away. So I will repeat myself. Go. Um, <laughs> are, you know, you've, got, you've got to ask yourself, are you really showing your customers or your prospects that you understand them, that you remember them, that you know what they like, and that you're easy to do business with. I mean, that is the thing in this world now where you want to create frictionless experiences that your customers or prospects quickly understand why they would work with you. Um, and simply put, if you're not, you need to have a bit of a rethink because um, that, that is the thing that will make the difference. Perfect. Well, Rob, thank you ever so much uh, for joining uh, us on, well, me on the show uh, t today. Really appreciate that. No worries, James. Good to speak to you. And thank you for um, having me on. Thank you so much. There we go. Okay. Rob, Rob Gold, live from Alexandra Palace there uh, in, uh, in the, the upper part of London. Well, I say upper part. It's the highest point of London, as Rob was telling me uh, yesterday. So there we go. Uh, oh, quick shout out to Gamdan, official friend of the show. Good morning, sir. And Kevin Boardman, hope you managed to get the technical uh, elements sorted so you could watch the show uh, live. If you haven't, here we go. Web address on screen, because if you'd like to check out previous episodes, all of the previous episodes, and all of the ways that you, you can subscribe subscribe to the show in podcast form visit the 414.net for all subscription options and previous episodes so there we go this has been the 414 for you as a, a uh, as a professional b2b marketer and each and every week i speak with some of the greatest and most interesting minds in b2b marketing for you to expand and enhance your knowledge every single week there we go my name's james rostance and please do join me same time here next week